Take your Bibles, turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 18, the Nativity story. I want to unpack, unwrap the Nativity story with you, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. We begin with the story of Joseph. On my prayer walk, I wrote in my journal, Navigating the Unexpected. Navigating the Unexpected. This is a season for many of great joy and love. But the Christmas season is also an opportunity to be robbed of your joy. And what's the number one reason people lose joy and happiness during the greatest season of the entire year? One word, unexpected. Things don't turn out the way that we envision. We have hopes and dreams, family and friends, special dinners, decorations like trees and lights, presents to be purchased. Our list goes on and on and on. And when things don't go our way, how do we respond? I believe one of the greatest overlooked heroes in the Bible is a young man named Joseph. My conviction about Joseph being an overlooked hero is because God trusted him. God chose him. Joseph was a young man engaged to be married to Mary. They were engaged when he discovers that she's expecting a child, and it's not his baby. Since they were young, they were in love with one another. They had dreams and visions. They perhaps put a down payment on a home. He had started a business as a carpenter. He had a reputation of being very skilled, and everything he did was in demand because of its quality. He had a business, he probably had a home in the village, and he was about to wed the woman of his dreams. And then something happens unexpectedly. How do you navigate the unexpected? How did Joseph navigate the unexpected? What can we learn? from Joseph and apply it to our lives today. Well, the story is found in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. It sounds like this in the New Living Translation. This is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, well, she was still a virgin. She became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us exactly how the birth of Christ came about. It's recorded in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 1 and 2, and it's completed in the Gospel of Luke chapter 1 and 2. 758 years before the birth of Christ, God had moved upon the heart of the prophet Isaiah. And Isaiah wrote these words found today in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. The Lord will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and you, you will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Oh, I love the continuity of God's word. I love the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. I love the way the Holy Spirit speaks consistently to our hearts and our spirits. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 1, God would send an angel with a word from heaven and tell Joseph two things. Number one, Mary is going to conceive a son by the power of the Holy Spirit. And number two, you will name him Jesus. When we come forward to the Gospel of Luke chapter 1, we read God sent 
another angel named Gabriel to Mary. And the continuity of the Holy Spirit is reinforced as Gabriel announces to Mary, you are going to conceive a baby boy by the power of the Holy Spirit. He will be a son. And number two, you are to name him Jesus. Jesus, Savior of the world. Jesus comes into the world to save all of mankind of their sin. What does Joseph do when his dreams and his plans and his hope, they all implode? The Bible tells us in chapter 1, verse 19, that Joseph, to whom Mary was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace Mary publicly. So he logically, carefully weighed all the options. He pondered and he makes a decision to end the engagement, but to do so quietly. Oh, I want to embrace. I want to plant that seed of truth in my heart and in your heart of what it's like to have a dream and then have that dream implode. To have those hopes and plans shattered, derailed, disintegrate well, before your very eyes. They burst into flames. They break apart. They literally implode. The Bible tells us that Joseph was a righteous man, but it also reveals to us that he was a graceful man. His sensitivity to quietly, not wanting to hurt Mary, but to quietly end the engagement. What we know about Joseph just in the first verse or two is that he was righteous and that he was kind and that he was gentle and that he was sensitive and that he was graceful. But we also discover in this same story that Joseph was a young man that knew the voice of God. And when the angel of the Lord came and spoke to him in a dream, he did not question the authenticity of the voice of God, for he knew the voice of God. And when he had the dream and he, and he saw the angel and the angel spoke to him, he received it for he knew how to listen to God. And the Bible goes on to say that when Joseph woke up, he followed the instructions of the Lord. He followed the voice of God. We know that Joseph was trusted by God, chosen by God to become the stepfather of God's only begotten son. I love the story of Abraham. I love the story of Noah, the story of Moses, the story of David and Daniel. I love all of these Bible stories. But the reason why I ponder whether or not Joseph may be the most overlooked Bible hero is because of the weight of his responsibility, how God chose Joseph, how God trusted Joseph to become the legal guardian of the Messiah, to become the stepfather in a blended family, having that responsibility with Mary to raise and provide for baby Jesus. What do we do? What do we do when our plans shatter? What do we do when our dreams fall apart? Well, we learn from Joseph what it is to carefully ponder, to, to weigh out our options, to consider all possibilities. What are we going to do next? That's the question on the heart and mind of Joseph. What's my next step? Now, we know he was righteous. 
We know he was graceful. We know he was sensitive. But he's about to discover that his decision, which was to end the engagement, turns out not to be God's decision. Is it possible? Is it possible? Is there a remote possibility that every plan you have may not be God's plan? Is it possible? Is it plausible that every good idea you have may not be God's idea? You see, in the story of the nativity, as we examine and weigh this overlooked Bible hero named Joseph, we recognize he had a plan and he pondered what to do and how to navigate when the unexpected happens. And once he makes his decision, then he's going to have this spiritual experience where the Lord speaks to the angel to his heart and says, your idea isn't my idea. Your plan isn't my plan. What you think is going to happen isn't going to happen. Is it possible? Is it plausible that our decisions are not always God's decision? Is it plausible or possible that our ideas are not always God's idea? And how do we respond when the reality is they come in conflict with one another? One of the most fascinating, remarkable parts of this entire story, and again, that's the reason why I wonder if he's the most overlooked Bible hero. Because God doesn't change his circumstances. God doesn't open the Red Sea for him. He doesn't, he doesn't part the Jordan River. He doesn't take the Goliath and kill him. He doesn't solve the problem. The problem is that the girl he chooses to wed is expecting a child, and it's not his. And how is he going to navigate that challenge? And the Bible says that God spoke to him in the dream. And that when he heard that dream, he woke up and he did what God had instructed him to do. We recognize in verse 20, it was God's eternal plan. But Joseph didn't know that. The day that he met Mary, he didn't know God had an eternal plan. The day he proposed to be engaged, he didn't know that God had an eternal plan. And when she reveals to him that she is expecting a child and it is not his, Joseph doesn't know God's eternal plan. He doesn't know he's been chosen in advance. He's been trusted with one of the greatest, in fact, I don't know. Is there a greater responsibility? Does someone have a greater responsibility to become the legal guardian? The ones responsible? How about you? What has God put on your plate? Do you have a son or a daughter? Sometimes you say, why me, God? Why, 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 why has this happened to me? Why do I have this kind of job? What's become of my family? What's become of my career? What's become of my life? Have you ever asked yourself that question and doubted that God is in control and he's leading and guiding you? You picked out a house and you didn't get it. You picked out a car. You didn't get it. You picked out a university to go to and you didn't get it. You picked out somebody to marry and they said no. Jobs, promotions, careers, families. <laughs> There are so many things in our lives that may or may not work out. And then we have to navigate the unexpected. But it is possible that God has an eternal plan. And it's about to be revealed to you. And that plan is that that 
baby was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. Joseph considered this, and an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. In Luke chapter 1, verse 31, God sends an angel to Mary and says, Mary, you will conceive and give birth to a son. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit. They discover God's eternal plan is greater than their earthly plan. They discover the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, the King of Kings, is to be named Jesus which means Savior. 758 years before Joseph has this spiritual experience, God moved on the heart of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord would give you a sign. Behold, God said to Isaiah. It's recorded in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. The virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and you will name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. John wrote it like this. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. John chapter 1, verse 14. And the word became flesh. Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the Son of Man. Jesus is Almighty God, he is deity. He is conceived by the Holy Spirit. He is the son of the living God. And his name in verse 21 of Matthew chapter 1, his name shall be Jesus, which is Greek meaning Savior. And in Hebrew, Joshua. But the name of Christ is given throughout Scripture. He's the Messiah. He is Emmanuel. He is King. He is Lord. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. His name is Jesus. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. And you were to name him Emmanuel. Luke chapter 2, verse 11. He is the Messiah. Matthew chapter 2, verse 2, he is the king of the Jews. Luke 2, verse 11, today in the city of David, a savior has been born unto you. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. He is the Messiah. He's the savior. He is Emmanuel. His name is Jesus. We find in these passages the scriptures of the nativity the fulfillment of Bible prophecy over and over again. Someone I was reading the other day outlined 351 scripture verses of Bible prophecy concerning the birth, the life, the death, the resurrection, the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ, all fulfilled. Someone else said it was closer to 400. Someone else thought five. And someone actually believes there are 600 verses. Here's the key. Everything about Christ, everything about Christ, his birth, his conception, his death, his resurrection, Bible prophecy, hundreds of years before the birth of Christ, all being fulfilled. Isaiah 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. Bible prophecy fulfills. Micah chapter 5, verse 2. But you, O Bethlehem, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me, the one who will rule over Israel. Bible prophecy fulfilled. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is to be born. To us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder, 
He will be called Wonderful Counselor. He will be called Mighty God. He will be called Everlasting Father. He will be called Prince of Peace. Joseph navigating the unexpected. Joseph is but a young man. Joseph is a skilled craftsman. By trade, he's a carpenter. And yet he faces overwhelming circumstances. And I wrote that on my prayer journey just the other morning, that he faced overwhelming circumstances. And here's what's key. God did not change his circumstances. God had an eternal plan. And God has an eternal plan for you. And sometimes we want God to change the circumstances. And sometimes God doesn't change the circumstances and says, this is the girl that you are to wed. You are to marry her. Jonah didn't like that. And he ran from God. God would speak to him from the belly of a great fish, a whale, if you will. Sometimes God will change our circumstances, but there are times in our lives where God does not change our circumstances because he loved us, he trusts us, and he chose us. God chose you to be the person that you are. You're not a Noah, and neither am I. I'm not a Joseph, and you're not a Moses. I'm not a Samuel, and you're not a David. You're not an Esther. You're not a Ruth. I'm not a Daniel. You're not a Deborah. You are the person that you are. God never changed the circumstances of Joseph. God never had Joseph change careers. He became a priest in the synagogue. Wouldn't that make sense since he's raising the Messiah? What God has an idea may be different than your idea. God's decision may be different than your decision. Joseph never changed careers. His circumstances didn't change. He stayed in the same village he grew up in, and he marries Mary. God used Joseph just the way he was. God used him just the way he was, and God uses you. In your situation, in your circumstances, God uses you. What can I say about Joseph? What can you say about Joseph? What can we discover? What mighty, compelling characteristics does Joseph possess? Two. Two. The two qualities that we cannot ignore is that Joseph knew the voice of God. Joseph knew the voice of God. When that angel came to him and spoke in a dream, he never questioned it. He wasn't a Gideon say, give me another dream. Let me throw out a fleece before I marry Mary. I want to put out a fleece before the Lord. God speaks to us all uniquely and different. To one, it'll be a fleece. To another, it'll be a burning bush. To another, it'll be a small, still voice. To the wise men, it was a star that guided them. Do you know the voice of God? Do you know the discernment of the voice of God? And when you hear the voice of God, the second characteristic about Joseph that causes me to ponder that he may be the most overlooked Bible hero. Because when he heard from God, he woke up and he did what God had instructed. Moses would stumble, David would stumble, Jonah would stumble. So many Bible characters would stumble. Esther would question what Mordecai had asked. What I love about Joseph is he heard from God, and he did as God spoke to his heart. This is the greatest season of the year, and we celebrate the birth of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we recognize 
We're called upon to navigate the unexpected in our lives. You be blessed. I wish you and your family a merry, merry Christmas.